What's up everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed Channel. Today we're going to learn a little bit about UPS systems and how to test them. I have a collection of these CyberPower 1500 VAs and um, some of them work, some of them don't. And we're going to open some of them up. We're going to test them out, see how good their batteries are, and maybe discover why they're failing. Alright guys, this is the CyberPower 1500 VA. It's got some features that I might like and I might dislike. Starting at the power strip side, it's got a surge suppressor side and it's got a battery plus surge. If you don't pay attention to these, you actually will get caught by that because you'll be plugged into the surge and you'll lose battery power. Or you'll lose AC power and you'll be like, hey, why is my computer shutting off? It's because you plugged it into the wrong side. Eh, I guess it is what it is in order to form that many outlets. These bottom two are going to be close to useless because of the power cord. Um, it is what it is. I do like that they got some spaced out ones for power adapters. And it's got a little circuit breaker in the middle. We have uh, protection for coax. Now, I myself have had lightning come in on coax. And I've had a lightning strike on my regular phone lines and it destroyed everything that was attached to it. Went all the way through my network router and destroyed my um, destroyed my TV, it destroyed my modem, it destroyed my power switch, it destroyed everything. And if I would have had one of these systems here, it would have suppressed the, uh, the spark and I wouldn't have had the issue. I have USB and RS-232 serial, so you can warn your computer when it's about to fail. One of them is a semi-passive system. The other one is um, it's got an app a software that runs. So um, the serial is also good for the robot to notify it that AC power is out and to start shutting down. So got some cool features there. It's got what um, 12 outlets on it. So six of them are going to be battery plus surge, and you got six of them that are just surge only. But this guy, 1500 VA, it's actually pretty hefty. Uh, some of these guys are going to be working and I honestly have no idea which ones work and which ones don't. We're gonna find out together. So when you plug in a UPS system, hopefully it's in the off. Now these guys have been charging for like the last month. So the way to test the UPS, oh, well, you know something, hold on. Let's go back over some of the other features because these guys have some other unique features. We have USB in the front for charging, which is actually kind of rare. So if these are going to be mounted under a countertop, that's kind of neat. 2.1 amps worth of charging on the front. I have a menu where I can actually see the load and you can see the current status of your AC mains input. See, you can also see the output watts. Right now there's nothing plugged into it, so these guys will be working absolutely fine. If I had a higher load, like a fan or something, I'd plug it in. Hold on, I, I got something. I got something. Let's give it a little bit of a load. And to do that, I have a rock tumbler here. Not gonna draw a huge amount of amps, but it's gonna draw enough. And of course, going to get plugged into the battery plus surge. And you can see it is running. It's doing its thing. However, it has almost no load on this guy. So the way to test a UPS system is to give it a considerable load and then to unplug it from AC mains and it should click over and it should give you a timer for how much time you have left before it fails. Now you can see that this guy should go down, but if it starts dropping exponentially, that means that your batteries are not in a good way. Now, 317 minutes, there's no way that's gonna run 300 minutes. If I get 100 minutes with this, even though that's low amperage, 100 minutes, I'm actually pretty satisfied. 
and it looks like it's kind of stable. It has been charging for a month. Eh, it's falling a little bit. You hear the periodic beeping that's telling you that AC mains has failed. Let's give it a... Okay, I'm giving it some load. So what I'm doing is I'm increasing the amps. You can see around 300 minutes, 300 minutes, there's no way it's going to make it that long. But anyway, as soon as I shut it off, you can see it's going up to 500. Anyway, that's with the power disconnected. So this guy, I would say at the moment, is okay. Now I got to give it a heavier load in order to test it. Let's move to our second one. Let's see how it's doing. This guy here. Let's plug in AC mains. And let's give it a load. And let's turn it on. Okay. Everything looks fine. And notice how this guy drops out almost immediately. It has been charging for almost a month. So we have two different units and that is a really low amount of load. So that's how you would test a UPS system is you give it a load, you unplug it from AC mains and you test to see how long it runs for. This guy here has clearly failed. So this is gonna be my victim to open up and see what's going on inside. Okay, and to open this guy up, I believe we're gonna have to access through the rear port. Should be a number one Phillips. Let's separate those screws. Now I count four fasteners on the back cover. Normally UPS systems have an access panel, something of the sort. Cyber power is not that easy. There's also a couple fasteners on the front to take off the front panel. So it's my guess that the back panel is how you get into this guy. Too easily. There it is. It's got some plastic snaps. Okay, folks. Here you can see the interior. We've got some spade connectors. And interestingly, the buses on the rear are joined by just a couple wires. I thought it was going to be two lines worth of power strips on the inside. But nope, they created buses right here on the back panel. And they're connected with wires that go to a single card. Interesting. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. So back cover is not how these guys open. Let's put this one back in. And let's try for the front cover. There's two fasteners down here on the front. Now the back is how you would access the control panel, the uh, circuit board, the main circuit board, and the AC mains. But this guy comes off like this. There we go. We have one large ribbon connector. Interestingly enough, this guy here didn't appear to be connected. This is for the USB power. And here are my batteries. Slide it out. Batteries are warm. They're considerably warm because they've been charging for a month. Okay. And let's see, I got two spade terminals. 
and I've got a 12 volt 9 amp hour battery. One 9 amp hour battery. What? Okay, there's a second one. It's up here. That's so weird. Okay. So they have them in series. There we go. And there's one strap here that's holding it in. Should release my top battery here. Okay, so that's my jumper that puts the two batteries in series. And this upper battery, <laughs> it's kind of pressed in good. All right, the batteries are really warm, and normally that's an indicator of high internal resistance. Really warm. Yeah. Okay, next. I'm going to test out with the multimeter. Now the batteries being bad is just one thing. We know that lead acid batteries only have life expectancy of about three years. So I'm already a little suspicious when these ones appear to have a date code of 2019. So that means that they're already probably bad. I have 12 volts on this one. I got 12.8 four on that one and I have a battery load tester that we can hook up to these and run a load test but I'm not going to need to 2019 they're past the three years that's like gospel to me three years change them out so we have those two the next would be to test the charging circuit let's go ahead Put this guy over here. And connect the ribbon back up. Now some UPSs you can test out the charging circuit without the batteries and some of them you need the batteries in it to test out. I'm just going to kind of slap this front control panel up because I need the power on button. And then we're going to plug it in. this test I'm going to use the battery connections and it says I've got 27 volts for charging so we have 24 volts 27 should be our charging voltage and eh, maybe a little bit high but that's actually looking really good if you're seeing anything less than 24 volts or even 24 even that's reason to be concerned that would mean that inside this guy, it has failed. If you get batteries that fail, you should always try to test the charging system. So one of the ways is to check it with the batteries removed, and the other one is to check it with the batteries connected, because now you're placing the load on your circuitry, you should check against your in-series terminals to make sure that you're still getting the 24 to 27 volts. Now these ones here, they're just old, they're clearly tired. Voltage does not equal amperage. Remember that folks. So just because your battery shows that it's got 12 point something volts, as soon as you place a load on it, you're gonna have voltage sag. And this guy here probably is gonna dip down to six or seven volts. Now the batteries being exceptionally warm, that's not healthy form, but as batteries get older, the internal resistance on the plates is going to increase and when you increase resistance you're going to increase the heat because it's a giant resistor so as you're charging it it can't accept the charge because it's got a high resistance and also it's going to get warmer than usual like these ones are because the chargers working extra hard so in this case my base cabinet is good I need two 12 hour uh, 12 volt 9 amp hour batteries. I'll put them back in series. 
slap it back together and let it charge for 24 hours and then I will go ahead and do a load test on it which is when you place a load on this guy like I did earlier disconnect AC mains and then go ahead and take a look and see how long you're gonna have now the one that I assumed was gonna be good it had 300 minutes and that I really don't see that as being a reality however uh, like I said if I get even 60 minutes worth of time on a reasonable load on a 1500 VA system, I will consider that a win. So folks, there you have it. That's taking apart one of these guys. Always check when you're putting your batteries back in to make sure that the spade terminals are properly tensioned because if they're loose fitting, they'll cause arky sparks on the terminal. And as you're charging it or as you're creating a load on it, it's going to create hot spots. So always crimp your terminals, make sure they're nice and tight to the terminals on the battery, check your voltages, and do a load test when you replace your batteries to make sure that it is doing its job. Okay guys, there you have it. That's UPS's in a nutshell. Hope you like these kind of videos. If you do, please give me a thumbs up down below, and uh, maybe I will completely dissect one of these guys. I, I have three of them. Maybe one of them is going to be my victim. We'll find out. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below with what you'd like to see in future videos.